welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to supercharge a mini PC like we've never done before with one of these babies, an eGPU. What we have here is the GMK Tech AD GP1. This could completely transform your mini PC, and we're talking about some serious gains here for any computer that has USB 4 or Oculink. In this video, we're going to unbox it, install it, and test it thoroughly. We'll also compare USB 4 to Oculink, test noise levels, and see how quiet we can make this thing. So let's dive right in. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this here came directly from GMK Tech. It's not a sponsored video, and we'll keep it as unbiased as we can. After pulling off the plastic wrapper, we can open it up. Ooh. So inside the box, we get this eGPU, and our first impressions, yeah, seems tidy, and there's some weight to it. In this box, we have a uh, very large power supply. Wow. Now, this is a brick. It's a switching supply, so this will work around the world. Outputs are 20 volts, 12 amps, and 240 watts. In here, we also get the Oculin cable. Another one for USB 4. Some kind of warranty card. And a power cable for the country that you reside in. It's basically a kettle lead, and as I'm in Japan, this is the American version. Let's take a look at the specs. So what we have here is essentially an eGPU dock and graphics card rolled into one. They used an upper mid-range Radeon 7600 MXT, which can trade blows with the RTX 4060 laptop GPU. And with 32 compute units running at 2300 MHz, this should obliterate any current mini PC iGPU. As for the price, it's currently going at $470 on Amazon, and slightly cheaper on the GMK Tech website. If you want to purchase one, Please check the affiliate links down below where you can support our channel at no extra cost to yourself. So let's have a closer look. So here it is, and as we mentioned before, it's quite tidy. There's a mix of metal, plastic, and you can see the fan here. So let's move to the front. Over here there's uh, a light, and there are plenty of tiny holes, giving us enough air to cool this bad boy down. Over here we've got some more holes, this will be for the exhaust. But if we look around the back, this is where all the action is. We have two DP 2.0s. A couple of HDMI 2.1s, an Oculin port, another for a USB 4, and on the end, the power jack. On the right side, we do have a few more holes for air intake, and underneath, labels, more metal to help with cooling, and two bars of rubber to stop it from slipping around the table. But before we plug it into our computer, we need to install the drivers. You can find them on the AMD website, just simply download and install the adrenaline set for the 7600M XT. Once done, shut down and unplug your computer. Then proceed to give power to your eGPU. Use the Oculin cable to connect the eGPU to the computer. And then plug up the monitor via HDMI or display port from the eGPU. Now everything's connected, we can plug up the computer again. And power on. So at first glance, nothing really seems out of the ordinary. But if we check out the Adrenaline driver software, click on the cog, it will find that the RX 7600 MXT has been found. Now, any game we run, we'll use this graphics card. But before we check the games, benchmarks. First up is Geekbench, and we can see straight away that this is head over heels better than any internal GPU we've tested to date. Fire Strike gives a legendary score of over 25,000, and Time Spy keeps on ticking with a legendary 10K. But it probably makes way more sense to compare it to a well-known GPU, the 780M, in some games. Shadow of the Tomb Raider first at 1080p high jumps from 45 FPS to 155, giving us over triple the performance. If you go for the numbers, here they are, with the rising temps and power usage to match. We also ran the Monster Hunter Wilds benchmark, both with and without frame gen. As you may or may not know, this game is pretty demanding, and if you're only using internal graphics, you'll need to lower them settings to have a good time. Whereas the eGPU... Hmm... But what about the difference between USB 4 and Oculink? Well, we ran the same benchmark and found that while Oculink does lead, USB 4 is not far behind. He needed a little more CPU power, but compared to internal graphics, night and day. The same could be seen when we actually tested out some games. Here's CS2, 4K resolution, low settings. And another favorite, Fortnite. But how is it with different mini PCs? 
I mean, if you've got faster CPU speed and memory, things should change, right? Well, yes. We ran the same benchmarks on a variety of mini PCs and found that the K11 with the higher clocked CPU ran better than even the Evo X1, which had more cores and much faster memory. The M6 was held back by the lack of the Ocklink ports. But even then, having such an affordable mini PC run Cyberpunk 2077 is pretty incredible. But what if you don't have the USB 4 or Ocklink port? Well, there is an option, the M2 to Ocklink adapter. They're fairly cheap on AliExpress and we'll test it out as soon as we get one in. So enough with the comparing, let's just focus in on games connected via Oculink. We'll be using the K11 Mini PC, and let's see what speeds we can get. Right here we're in 4K, but let's move it to 1440p. And the lowest I'm ever going to go, 1080p. But what about the games that the new kids like? Well, Marvel Rivals at 1080p medium settings gives us around 100 FPS. And if we flick on FSR 3 with frame gen, we average at around 150. Here's everyone's favorite, Cyberpunk 2077. And at 1080p medium settings, we're getting around 100 FPS. Now with frame gen, We mentioned earlier that this card also has some ray tracing cores, so let's give it a spin. This is with the ray tracing medium settings at 1080p. As you can see, we've got 44 FPS. Switching it to the low ray tracing default does give us a boost. But to improve image quality, we need to get off FSR, fiddle around a bit, and give it our own settings. There are other ray trace games available on Steam, but we need to keep our expectations in check, as this graphics board is not in the same league as a 4070. So, Portal at 1080p default settings looks alright, but it's a bit of a slug to play. Unless we knock the resolution down to 720p. Moving on to the noise levels now. At idle, the eGPU is pretty much silent. In-game, we never really saw the temps exceed 75 degrees, but it did get a bit noisy. To lower the temps and noise levels, we can simply turn on VSync or limit the FPS to 60, which gives us 59 degrees Celsius on the GPU and makes it much quieter. There are some more tricks we can use, for example lowering the TDP on the mini PC, as well as giving it more resources and less work by turning off the iGPU, provided your bias lets you do that. Time for the teardown. There are actually some screws underneath each of these rubber tabs. That's one in each corner, we need a small posi screwdriver to get them out. Then it opens up, like that. Ooh. Again, fairly tidy. We can see the heat sink and blower fan. To remove the fan, there are three screws. Here, here, and here. Then it comes right off. Of course, we'll have to remove the connector. And there are two more posi screws that hold the board in. Four more screws hold the heat sink to the main processor. Then we can remove this plate. Then carefully nudge off the heat sink. And there you go. So it's pretty easy to change the thermal pads and thermal paste if needed. But let's see how the stock thermal paste compares to some MX6. So now with MX6 thermal paste, there seems to be not much difference really. And when the V-Sync is turned off, it's just as loud. As the temperature doesn't really go over 75 degrees, there's a good chance that the fan settings are just a little aggressive for this eGPU. But I think it's about time we get to the pros and the cons. The GMK Tech ADGP1 is an incredibly easy upgrade for compatible computers. 
The increase in speeds allow it to play even demanding games in high resolution, and it's quite affordable considering it's an all-in-one solution. Unfortunately, it gets let down by being quite noisy. You can mitigate that by limiting frames, but we hope the GMK Tech can roll out a BIOS update to calm down the fan a little. But while it was a little noisy, it did bring gaming to the most affordable mini PC. And if they do release an update, we'll be sure to pin an announcement in the comments down below. Summary. Gather round, got a tale to tell of a, a little box that works quite well. The GM Keck Tech 80 GP1 to speed your games, it turns me on. Well, it's their kinder. Don't expect the world, but a quick appetizer. Adjust your settings. Don't be silly. Cruising through those games and not look like a willy. Over three times faster than the 780M, like a rocket ship. It's a real gem. 4K, 4K.